a memorable day for Pepito. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. Thursday started out just like any other day for Pepito. Before 8 in the morning, he'd already completed 11 laps around Pistachio Park, run along 7.5 miles of telephone wire, and gathered 26 pounds of assorted nuts and berries. He delivered the nuts and berries to neighbors along the way, and they were all very grateful. Everywhere he ran, he was greeted with the same familiar shout. Hey, Pepito! Hey, Pepito! Hey, Pepito! Up and down he ran, doing favors, fixing things, running errands. There was never time to formally thank him. He was always on the run. He raced by a group of chipmunks on their way to school. Hey, Pepito! They squealed in unison. Hey, Pepito! shouted a raccoon, sorting out the morning trash for recycling. Old Sheldon the turtle was just emerging from his shell when Pepito sped by. Hey, Pepito, he grumbled wearily. Everyone in the village loved Pepito. Well, not everyone. Forever loitering outside the gate to old Mrs. Brumlow's garden were three bullies. Barry was a belligerent badger, always on the lookout for trouble. Shirley was a mean-spirited skunk. And Quislington was a fat groundhog who never had a kind word or thought for anyone. That little squirrel is driving me nuts, said Barry. Who does he think he is, always speeding around here doing good deeds like some goody two-shoes, said Shirley. Let's teach him a lesson, said Quislington. But how are we ever going to catch him? He never stops running. I have a plan, said Barry. Barry grabbed a long stick, and the three of them sat huddled behind a large forsythia bush, waiting for Pepito to run by. Meanwhile, Pepito continued buzzing about the village, gathering nuts, chattering to himself, happily enjoying the warm autumn morning. He actually ran directly past the forsythia bush several times before Barry and the gang finally managed to trip him up. But trip him up they did. Pepito hit the stick at full speed and was sent flying head over heels, end over end. Seven somersaults in a row before landing with a thud in a pile of leaves. And when he crawled out, he found himself surrounded by the gang. We hear you're pretty fast, said Barry. You heard right, said Pepito, brushing leaves from his tail. We hear you're pretty good at gathering nuts, said Shirley. Pepito didn't answer. He knew these characters were up to no good, and all he could think about was how he might give them the slip and make his getaway. I bet I know some nuts that he can't get, said Barry. He pointed towards old Mrs. Brumlow's garden. Not a chance, said Shirley. I'm sure he's afraid to even try. Pepito didn't even want to look. Everyone knew that never under any circumstances was anyone allowed to set foot in old Mrs. Brumlow's property. But he saw what they were talking about. Just inside the garden fence was an oblong cage open at both ends. In the center of the cage was a metal tray loaded with walnuts. I have to be going now, said Pepito, slowly edging away. I knew he couldn't do it, said Barry. Of course he can't. Nobody could get those nuts. He's afraid because he knows he can't do it. In a blink of an eye, Pepito bolted under the fence, through the cage, and was standing before them again with six walnuts cradled in his arms. He dropped the nuts on the ground. There you go. Two for each of you. My present. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll be on my way. I knew he couldn't get all of the nuts. I guess he did the best he could. He couldn't do it. He failed. Ha, ha, ha laughed Quislington. For a moment, Pepito had no idea what they were talking about. But then he looked, and sure enough, there was one walnut still sitting on the metal plate. He had left one nut behind. Without even thinking, he ran back towards the cage. But this time, as soon as he was inside the cage, the metal doors at both ends slammed shut with a loud clang. He was trapped. Help! screamed Pepito. Somebody please help! I've been trapped! I guess you're not so quick after all, said Quislington, and Pepito could hear the three of them running away, laughing. 
Everything had happened so fast, it just didn't seem real. But when he heard the laughter fading in the distance, Pepito suddenly became very scared. He ran around and around and around, rattling the walls of the cage, continuing to cry help! for help. help. Back and forth, he ran, slamming Somebody his body against the cage help. again and again trapped. until he was completely exhausted. He tried once more to help. call for help, but his voice had been reduced to a faint rasping squeak that nobody could ever possibly hear. I'll never get out of here, thought Pepito. Unless someone comes to help me, I'll be trapped inside this cage forever and ever. He imagined himself shivering alone in the cage all winter long as the snow piled up around him. But of course, he would run out of food long before winter arrived. He was already feeling a little hungry and thought about opening the one walnut he had with him, but decided he'd better save it until he was really starving. But even if he only nibbled on it a little every day, how many days could it possibly last? He was hopeful that someone might notice that he was no longer buzzing about the village and think that something might have happened to him. Surely his parents would come looking for him when he didn't return home for lunch and dinner. And there was a good chance that those three blabbermouths would go around bragging about how they had tricked him. Surely someone would come and find him. These thoughts gave him hope, but suddenly he was again overcome with fear. What if old Mrs. Brumlow found him first? If anyone came looking for him, it would be Mrs. Brumlow. After all, it was her garden. What would happen to him then? With all these terrifying thoughts running through his head, Pepito fell into a deep sleep. Just as dusk was falling, Pepito awakened with a start and felt the entire cage being lifted up from the ground. It was Mrs. Brumlow herself carrying the cage out through the garden gate. In one hand she carried the cage holding a handle on the top and in the other hand she carried a large spray can. Pepito huddled quietly in the center of the cage, too terrified to move. Mrs. Brumlow set the cage down on a stump a few yards from her garden and started shaking the aerosol can. Well, 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 what do we have here? Said old Mrs. Brumlow. I was hoping to catch that nasty little badger who is forever tearing up my garden, but instead I find a cute little squirrel. The can Mrs. Brumlow was shaking happened to be a container of artificial snow, the kind used to decorate wreaths and Christmas trees during the holiday season. Pepito sat silently in the center of the cage, trembling with fear. I'm going to give you another chance, said Mrs. Brumlow. But first, I'm going to teach you a lesson. And with that, she sprayed the snow directly through the bars of the cage, completely covering Pepito with a thick, fluffy white paste. And then, to Pepito's surprise, old Mrs. Brumlow opened both doors to the cage. Now get out of here! And don't ever come back, she shouted. For a moment, Pepito stood motionless, too frightened to move. Now go on, get! And if I ever see a squirrel on my property again, I'll reach for my pellet gun instead of a can of snow. With that, Pepito bolted out of the cage and ran faster than he had ever run in his life. He was so happy and relieved to be suddenly free again, he burst out laughing. <laughs> Running and laughing and leaping into the air, he headed directly home taking the shortcut through Pistachio Park. It was just beginning to get dark. At that very moment, Barry Shirley Quislington Jr. happened to be sitting on a bench in the park. When they saw the white squirrel running towards them, laughing, they were overcome with fear and started screaming at the top of their lungs. It's a ghost! It's Pepito! We killed him and now he's come back to haunt us! Please don't hurt me! It was all their idea. Yes, it's me. I've come back to haunt you. And you'd better run far away because I will follow you and haunt you until the end of time. Now Pepito was the one laughing as Barry and the gang ran away screaming. He was delighted with himself for thinking so quickly. As he approached the family tree, he could see his mother waiting for him on the front porch with a stern expression. 
Pepito was so happy to see his mother, he sped up the steps in a flash and leapt into his mother's arms. Pepito! Is it you? My word, what has happened to you? And where in the world have you been? The North Pole? Well, your father is out looking for you. And when he gets home, you will have some explaining to do. But right now, you are going straight to the bath and wash off all that white goo. As Pepito settled down into his warm bath, he thought about how lucky he was in the end. He could easily still be outside, trapped inside that cage. Or worse. His father would soon return, and when he did, Pepito better have a good story to tell. He thought for a minute about a possible variation involving the North Pole, but decided that there are times when the best story to tell might just be what actually happened. Mm -hmm.